This video introduces rules for differentiating some of the other functions that we need to know about if we're going to be looking at real world problems. Cosine and sine, the trigonometric functions, exponentials and logarithms, they pop up a lot when we're studying real world problems using mathematics. And often we want to know about how those things change as well. So in this video, we'll be looking at finding or using the rules to find the rate of change of these kinds of functions. So here's a little table with some of the basic ones. Uh, there's lots of things besides polynomials and rational functions and products of functions, but those also can sometimes have exponentials and logs and signs and causes multiplied by them or divided by them or plugged in somewhere, and we need to differentiate those. To do that, we're going to basically use this table here. Now, the function f of x equal to e to the x is one of the coolest ones because it has a derivative which is itself. It's the only function that's like that really. So f of x equal to e to the x differentiates to e to the x. In other words, its rate of change is its own value. f of x equal to log x, the natural log of x, that's important to note that, log x, not log base 10 or log base 2 or anything else, its derivative is just 1 on x. So it's x to the minus 1. f of x equals sine x differentiates to cos x, and cos x differentiates back to minus sine x. So don't forget that little minus sign there, and don't forget that it isn't in that rule for sine x going to cos x. Now these rules for differentiating those functions can be combined with what we know about uh, adding functions, multiplying functions by constants, products, quotients, and all of those rules we've already used. So all of these can be combined now. So let's check out an example where we do exactly that. f of x in this example is e to the x, the exponential, multiplied by sine x. So we have a product of two functions, e to the x and sine x. That's our product. And we want to find the derivative of that. So we're going to use our rules from this page, e to the x and sine x, so this one here and this one here. We're also going to use the product rule. So if you haven't looked at the product rule video yet, make sure that you do look at that first. All right, so given f of x is e to the x sine x, I'm going to say let u equal e to the x and v equal sine x, getting ready for our product rule. And to use the product rule, we need those derivatives. So u dashed, our table back here says the derivative of e to the x is e to the x itself. So u dashed is e to the x. And v dashed, the derivative of sine of x, derivative of sine of x is cos x. So we can just write that one straight in, cos x. So our product rule then says that f dashed of x is v dash, uh, sorry, v times u dash which is sine x times e to the x, e to the x sine x, just writing it in the same order, and then plus u times v dash, so u is e to the x, and v dash is cos x. So there's our derivative using the product rule and our new rules for differentiating exponential and trig functions. You can factor that up if you like, pulling the e to the x out, but I'm not going to worry about that, it won't make much difference. So there's our derivative, the instantaneous rate of change of e to the x sine x. Let's check out one more example. Use the quotient rule this time, so I'm telling you which rule to use, and your rules for differentiating trig functions to find the derivative of tan x. All right, so in other words, our function f of x is tan x. Now, if we look back to our table, there is no rule for tan x in there. However, we do know what tan x is defined to be. In particular, tan of x is sine of x, divided by cos of x. In other words, the quotient of sine x and cos x. We know rules for sine x and cos x as derivatives from our table back here, so we can use those along with the quotient rule to get our derivative for tan x. So I'm going to identify sine of x as u and cos of x as v. So that means u dashed from our table a couple of slides back is cos x. And v dash, remember when we differentiate cos, a minus sneaks in, minus sine of x. And we can put those all together with the quotient rule. So we're going to have f dashed of x is v by u dash. So that's cos of x by u dash, which is another cos of x. I'm going to make that cos squared just to save some space. Then minus u, which is sine x multiplied by v dashed, which is minus sine x, so that minus will turn that into a plus, and the sine x we can call that sine squared, all divided by v squared, so that's cos squared of x. All right, now we could leave that, but maybe you remember trigonometric identities, and that when you have cos squared of something plus sine squared of the same thing, 
that's actually equal to 1. So we can replace that and just simplify it down to 1 over cos squared of x. And it's fine to leave it like that, or if you're familiar with the reciprocal trig functions, you can also write that as sec squared of x, sec being 1 on cos. Okay, so that's another example of using the rules we already know, the quotient rule, and our new rules, trig and exponential and log rules, to find a derivative of a function, in this case tan x. You can also think of that as a rule for the derivative of tan x, if you like. Okay, so just to summarize, we know now how to differentiate polynomials, exponentials, logs, trig functions, products of functions, and quotients of functions. What about where to now? Well, we already have the rule for the natural logs derivative, natural log of x differentiates to 1 on x. Have a think about investigating the derivative of the natural log of k times x, where k is any non-zero constant. Have a play around with that and see what you notice. Maybe you might want to add that one to your cheat sheet as well. It's a bit more of a general rule than log of x. Okay, so other than that, make sure you're attempting the exercises from the worksheet and getting plenty of practice. Seeing your teaching team if you need any help with those as well.